Okay, guys, let me know who wins, Marab or O'Malley. I'm picking Marab. Let me tell you guys why I think Marab is going to win. Okay, but before actually, before I tell you why I think O'Malley's, uh, Marab is going to win, let me talk to you about O'Malley first. Okay, O'Malley, I went over his fights today. I rewatched his fights with Peter Yan. I rewatched uh, Marab's fight with uh, Henry Cejudo. Both very impressive fighters. The number one thing O'Malley brings to the table is his stance switching, his reach, and his power. Okay, he's a very strong puncher he's a very very strong knee he has a beautiful knee he hurt Peter Yan with a knee to the face late in their fight guys just for the record I really think Peter Yan won I thought the first time I watched that fight I thought Peter Yan won I rewatched it today I thought Peter Yan won I can't understand how they gave it to Sean O'Malley but nonetheless Sean O'Malley hung in tight it was a close close fight nonetheless Sean O'Malley gets the nod now I'll tell you something Sean O'Malley was doing really well in the striking he has a lot of powerful strikes we saw him knock out Al Jermaine Sterling with one big punch in round two like one clean shot and the fight was over yes he jumped on top of him but there was no saving Sterling at that point he was really really injured he got a really big powerful right cross right on the chin what was making it so difficult for Sterling to get the takedown well O'Malley is very precise he's long he's powerful and he switches stances a lot when he switches stances you're never sure if that leg is going to be there it's really difficult to get to a single leg if you don't know which leg is going to be there now he's got a very powerful cross he's got a very powerful knee up the middle he's a good kicker but he's not doesn't do a lot of damage with his kicks it's really his hands and his knee we saw him knee cheeto in the face several times it was a very dangerous attack still however watching him go against peter yan and the way Peter Yan got him down to the ground every round consistently makes me think that Marab, even though Marab's stand-up is nowhere near as good as Peter Yan, nowhere near as good as O'Malley, I still think he's going to be able to weather the storm. It's going to be a very tough first two rounds. Marab has a chance of getting knocked out in the first two rounds. I hope Marab, Marab is very careful in the first two. He got hurt bad by Henry Cejudo in round one. Marab gets stunned, still comes back. But what shocked me from Marab was at one point he completely took over the Cejudo fight. Completely. Round one was close. I gave Cejudo the first round. But round two and three, it just seemed like Marab kicked it up a gear. His cardio is on another level. Watch Peter Yan versus O'Malley. In round three, O'Malley was fatigued, very fatigued. He was hanging in tough. He was toughing it out. However, his pace does not increase in the later rounds. It seems to slow down. While Marab is the complete opposite. Marab seems to get stronger as the fight goes. I have no doubt he can do five rounds. Marab's conditioning is... There is no question about his conditioning. There is no question. Now, O'Malley needs a finish. If I was O'Malley, if I was O'Malley's coach, I would want him to throw everything in round one you gotta put this guy away in round one i'll tell you why marab when he trades is very exposed he's not careful like a peter yan he's not calculated like a peter yan he doesn't have the defense and the distance control and the footwork and the combinations peter yan has i think marab's striking offense is gonna be dwarfed in comparison to sean o'malley he's gonna in the early rounds i'm referring to the early rounds in the early rounds He's going to have to tiptoe around Sean O'Malley striking. He cannot trade with Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley will counter him and put him to sleep. However, I think Marab knows this. He's not dumb. He's a very intelligent guy. Now, kneeing Marab to the face could be really big or it could backfire. Marab could catch that leg and take you down and hold you down and ground and pound and, and solidify top position. A lot of you guys are going to wonder, hey, how's Sean O'Malley's jiu-jitsu? It's good. He's got a very good guillotine. He's known for finishing people, well, not necessarily in, in MMA, but he's got a good guillotine. Okay, he's a very good guillotiner. I just don't think he's good enough to guillotine Marab. Possible, but very, very difficult. Of course, we have the Ricky Simone famous ultra famous guillotine. For those of you who, who haven't seen it, Marab fought Ricky Simone. Ricky Simone puts him in a tight guillotine, rolls, <laughs> rolls Marab over. So Ricky Simone's now mounted with a guillotine. And Marab's legs are like bicycling. He's doing the bicycle for some reason. Trying, I think he's trying to show everybody, hey, I'm still awake. I'm still awake. 
Then the bell rings, Ricky Simone lets him go, and you can see that Marab is completely out, but his legs are still doing the bicycle. How is that possible? I have no idea. I've never seen that before. Nobody's ever seen that before. We were all shocked. I was actually there at the event. I had some other fighters fighting. We were all stunned. How could the guy be both out and doing the bicycle? He's still flailing his legs. How is that possible? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe we get a guest neurologist on the show. How is that possible? I got no idea. Controversial fight. Very controversial. Everybody was going nuts. It was crazy. Mirab can be guillotined. We know that. However, I just have a feeling that now he's more seasoned. He's more careful. He knows about the guillotine. Guys, don't forget. Sean O'Malley has a deadly guillotine. Could it be that he shoots into a guillotine and gets subbed? When was the last time a world title fight was won by guillotine? I'm having a hard time remembering, but none is coming to mind. It is possible, of course. I just can't think of one right now. Okay, guys, I am picking Marab. I think he's going to win it. I think he's going to be smart enough to get out of the first two rounds. He's going to get O'Malley down to the ground, and he's going to outpace O'Malley. O'Malley will get tired. O'Malley will get fatigued. I do fear for him the guillotine. However, I have a feeling he's going to get past it. He's working on it. He's making sure he doesn't get guillotine. Not always an easy thing to do. Guys, make sure to use Level Up 50 Off. Promo code Level Up 50 Off. I just released today. Outside heel hook. Guys, two weeks ago, I released inside heel hook. Now I released outside heel hook. So you have now the cross ashy made easy and outside ashy made easy. Advanced basic series. If you get these two videos, you will become a leg lock genius. You will break people's legs if you, that's what you choose to do. Two ultra powerful leg lock videos that go together. Okay, make sure you study both. It's over three hours of leg locking. Okay, put those two videos together. You have over three hours of leg locks and very precise. You guys know me, very precise. The most important moves first, everything well organized. You have a detailed sheet of everything that's in the video. You click on the link. It takes you directly there. You memorize that sheet. You review the video just by looking at the sheet. You don't have to rewatch it again unless you want to see certain details. They're all highlighted in the script of the video. All Juji Club videos are fully scripted. So if you want to know a detail, it's scripted, it's written out for you. You click on it, it takes you straight to the video where that detail is being showed, etc. It's the best way to learn. Okay, so make sure to use Level fi Up level up 50 Off and get any video on jujuclub.com 50% off now. Guys, don't forget, check out the description for TS, tsdorms at gmail.com if you guys want to stay at the TriStar Dorms and train with me and all the pros at the TriStar Gym. Do your next training camp at the TriStar Gym. Send an email to tsdorms at gmail.com. It's in the description if you want to book your dorm room today. Okay, guys, I'm taking questions only, only strictly on this fight. I'm very, very excited for this fight. It's happening at the Sphere. I wonder what that's going to be like. I believe it's a one and done. I think it's going to be a one-time thing at the Sphere. It's a great day when Coach Faraz jumps on a live stream. Sean Kuvarik, a member. Thank you very much. That's very, very sweet of you. Merci beaucoup. Swiss S says, O'Malley's chins Marab early. Well, that's the expectation. Look, if I was O'Malley's coach, I would tell him, look, you're going to stand in the center of that cage. Whatever he throws at you, you have to deck him. You have to floor him. You have to floor him. You can't let him touch your legs. If he touches your legs, you're going to go down. I, I just have a feeling that Marab's going to take him down repeatedly. And every takedown is going to lead to easier and easier takedowns. It's going to be a downward spiral. Not to say that O'Malley can't take his head off, clean off in the first two rounds. Absolutely. Yes. Just watching Peter Yan. Peter Yan is very smart. You know, he's very, very dangerous striking. So Marab is nowhere near the level of striking uh, Peter Yan has. But the, the, the irony of it is, the irony is when you're so worried about the takedown, sometimes you get hit with crazy stuff. Okay, so you're so worried about the takedown, the guy throws some shots at your head and ends up knocking you out. And the wrestler looks like he's a better striker than the, the kickboxer. Yeah, but the guy was super worried about the takedowns. His, at his attention was completely divided. I think Sean is a favorite, but only by a bit. That's from Banyas Beans Official. Well, guys, I'm going against the favorites. Last time I picked DDP, Everybody picked, well, not everybody, I would say 60% picked Adesanya. It was a very, very close four rounds until DDP subbed him. I mean, it was very close. It was a very, very close fight, but it's so difficult. Look, we have here the poll so far, 66% say O'Malley, 34% say Marab. I understand the 
the confidence of Normali. He's a great puncher. He's got that distance. He's a switcher. When you switch, you double up your angle, especially when you're a long, lanky guy like that. He's got powerful, powerful strikes. I wouldn't say he's the best kicker, but he's a phenomenal, phenomenal puncher. Precision puncher. Great distance control. Switches sides, so he doubles up the angles. Makes it very, very difficult to, to corner him. And he's got a great knee. Fantastic spearing knee to the face. Really dangerous attack. Marab has a good chin. That's from Muhammad Mazagi. Yes, he has a good chin, but he's been rocked. Okay, Omali, uh, excuse me, uh, Sehuro rocked him bad in round one. Rocked him bad. He recovered, yes, but if that was Omali that rocked him like that, I think he could he could have put on the finishing touches. Marab does not do much with his takedowns. That's from Confidential. That was my one of my worries. I'm telling you something. When I was watching him fight Sehuro, I was like. Yeah, but he doesn't do anything. He doesn't have like this vicious ground and pound. He doesn't have like this punishing top pressure that suffocates you. That was one of my worries, but I just still think he's going to maul him. He's just, his wrestling is too good. His conditioning, his conditioning is absurd. It's unrealistic. It's, un, it's just, it's incredible. Mirab may surprise Sean with the striking. That's from Banyas. Yes, especially if he softens him up with the wrestling. Sometimes when you're fighting a wrestler, you're so overly worried about their takedown that you end up getting punched. Okay, There are too many classical examples of that. I won't go through them all, but believe me, we've seen it time and time again. Dang, for us, it's awesome to see you talk football. That's from Google, Google account. Well, thank you, man. Again, I'm no expert in the sport or anything like that, but I just love this. I just love the game. The jab consistently set up his takedowns. That's from Combs. No, not from Marab. Marab's not a big jabber by any chance, by any means of a. Marab's more of a like rock 'em, sock 'em, uh, tough guy, you know, but he's not. He's not going to win this fight just by striking. He's going to have to wrestle. That's, there's no doubt in that. Do you think Marab's chin can survive a O'Malley KO power? That's from Mystical Mistress. Not if he gets hit clean early. Like, if he gets hit with with, with what Aljamain Sterling got hit with, he's going down. He's going down. Like, Aljamain Sterling couldn't get close enough to the legs. We saw a matured O'Malley really piece him up and clip him on the way in. I just think that Marab is going to be so much more careful. He's not going to run in the way O'Malley did. He's going to take things in later rounds. Oh, uh, excuse me, not like Sterling did. I think Sterling tried to engage O'Malley way too early in the fight. Way too early. Devin Tuck. Coach, does Marav have the best gas tank ever? It's unrealistic what he does, man, in there. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. How many times he shot on Peter, Peter Yan? How many times he shot on Jose Aldo? It just doesn't make sense to me. But still, I think the best cardio ever is Khabib. Habib has the best cardio ever. Guys, don't forget, I'm only doing questions on... Murab versus O'Malley for now. 65% calling for O'Malley to win. Murab, 35%. Oh, boy. We're really at odds this time. We are really at odds. How can Murab close the distance against such a dangerous striker? That's from Simone Dussault. That's the hard question. That's the million-dollar question. I think he's going to shoot a single leg. He's going to check. Trap the single leg. He's going to tie up O'Malley. He's going to push him towards the fence. I think he's going to be very careful. He's not going to push the pace in round one and two. I think he's going to take his time. He's going to be careful. He's going to lose maybe rounds one and two, and then he's going to start to pick it up. Every time he takes O'Malley down, O'Malley's going to try to get up. He's going to put O'Malley back down. He's going to get up. He's going to put O'Malley back down, and then we're going to see O'Malley maybe try to use his jujitsu and stuff like that. And Marab has just too many years of grappling. I don't think he gets caught in the sub. The only sub I can really see him get caught in is the guillotine. 
Do you think Marab is on EPO? That's from Simon Dussault. Look, I wouldn't accuse the guy without any proof, okay? But just for me, it's unrealistic. His cardio just seems unrealistic. But for me, you're innocent to proving guilty. Do you think that Marab has a larger gas tank than Sean? Question mark. If so, how should he use it? That's from Dr. Zay. Yes, absolutely. That's the whole point. That's the one reason. Like, if they had comparable gas tanks, I would pick O'Malley. It's just I think that O'Malley's going to throw shots and Marab's going to eventually create a tie-up. And that tie-up is going to be so intense for so long that it's going to soften up O'Malley's strikes. So O'Malley has a few chances to knock him out. That window's going to get smaller and smaller as the fight goes. Because Marab's gas tank is inhuman. It's just simply inhuman. Do you predict a decision or a stoppage? That's from Marno49. Look, I think it was more likely to go to decision. It's going to go to decision. Probably he's going to maul uh, Sean, but he has no real finishing. Oh, Marab doesn't really finish. You know, let me go see, actually. Let me go see his chart here. Let's look at Marab's chart here again. Okay, 17 and 4. Let's see here. Okay, he has 1, 2. Hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six ones in a row, then he comes back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wins in a row so far. And he has is ten and two in, in UFC. Three KOs only, thirteen decisions, thirteen wins by decision. Isn't that crazy? That's a lot of wins by decision. He's been he's only won with one submission his entire career. Let me try to find it. That's a he won by hold on a second. He won by armbar against a guy who's was six and two. That was in twenty seventeen. Okay, so he's got one submission in his entire career. And he's lost to one submission by one submission. Let's see, what submission did he get caught in? Oh, technical ability. And of course, uh, Ricky Simone. <laughs> he was out. The man was out and his legs were still pedaling. How could I forget? One of the most famous, bizarre guillotines I've ever seen. Excited for this card. Flashback. Mirab against Peter Yan. Mirab had lots of failed takedown attempts. But what was spooky was Mirab never got tired and kept going for the takedown and won. Crazy output. Remember, coach? Question mark. Yes, Shiz, I absolutely remember. I can't remember how many times he shot, but it was unreal. He just wouldn't relent. Shiz, you're 100% right. His unwavering, re relentless pressure. I don't even think he took Jose Aldo down once. I think he shot on Jose Aldo maybe like 20 plus times, but the volume of punching and, and wrestling attempts was so high. It was inhuman. And guys, Jose Aldo has a ridiculously good gas tank. It's inhuman. I don't understand how it's possible a human being can have so much conditioning. It's unreal. Now, if O'Malley throws any kicks, he's going to get taken down. If he throws any knees, he's going to get taken down. That leaves him with very little few options. He's got to put those straight punches together. Marab has to be smart and not get hit with those straight punches because if, I'm telling you, if O'Malley throws any type of kicking, Marab's going to grab that leg and he's going to take him down. It's going to be a mauling. Mirab has zero finishing potential, and Sean has shown in every fight he has the power to hurt in round five as well. That's from Diraj. Well, what fight did he really show he has so much power to hurt in round five? Against Cheeto? I mean, what a round five fight did he have? Let me... Re okay, against Cheeto, he had he had finishing power, yes, okay. Aljamain Sterling, he finished him round two. Uh, Peter Yan was three-round decision, okay, which a lot of us thought Peter Yan won. Let's be, let's be honest here, and... Although Sean had a very strong start in round three, he faded after. He faded and he looked tired at the end, okay? So it was a very, very tough fight, but definitely didn't seem like he, he was going to be comfortable doing five rounds. Uh, Paiva, he finished him in round one. Uh, Chris Montijo, he finished him in round three. So he doesn't have any five-round fights outside of Chito. Chito is the only five-round fight, you know? And Chito is not a high-paced wrestler. It's a different... Look... Chito and Sean O'Malley, gas tank is almost 
I won't say it's irrelevant. It's just that they're both strikers and they're going to stay in their comfort zone. They're not going to try to take each other down. People really get tired. Athletes at this level really get tired only when they're put it outside their comfort zone. Now, if me and you are strikers and we're striking and I put you in a realm of striking that you're not comfortable with, I can't fatigue you. However, if you stay in your comfort zone during the whole fight, Sean O'Malley is at distance. If you, if, he keeps, if you keep him at distance the entire fight, he's never going to get tired. You have to put him in positions he's not comfortable fighting it. And that's the only way you're going to get a guy like that tired. Cheeto never did that. So it's not surprising to me that he looked fresh and explosive in round five. If Murab plays with him at a distance, he's going to get crushed. He's going to get knocked down. That's definitely not the game plan. Okay, Murab is going to close the distance. He's going to tie him up. He's going to put him up against the fence. He's going to he's going to wrestle him up against the fence. He's going to tie him up in every which way. He's going to try to slow him down in every which possible way. Who is GSP rooting for, Ormali or Murad? That's from Tuxedo Mask. I spoke to him on Monday. He told me he his pick is Marab. I, my pick was also Marab. We were talking about the fight. And a lot of the guys in the gym disagreed with us. Okay, so <laughs> I can see here 63% are voting for O'Malley. So I could tell you in the, in, a, in the poll in the chat, I could tell you a lot of people are going for O'Malley. A lot. 